Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today it's all about glory, a game of knights. And this one really reminds me of this old flick with Heath Ledger and Knight's Tale, which for whatever reason I still enjoy to some extent. It's fun, definitely not taking too seriously. I believe a little bit more of background research went into this board game than it actually went into the movie but I may be completely wrong. This game comes with a solo mode, no not just one solo mode, with three different solo modes. I have not fully um, yeah, made up my mind which one to go for but most likely I will go with the viral rivalry one because it feels more like a two-player game. So in this case you have an AI which is actually interested in scoring some points. And I think that's what I want to focus on. Um, I already had some questions. Those questions have been answered on the Geek. Again, great resource as always. And yeah, with that being said, I think I will set up everything up and then yeah, let's see how things go, shall we? Okay, and here we are. I finally made up my mind and so we are playing against the rivalry bot or automa bot in this case. It's the red player, doesn't really come with any special abilities. Despite the fact that I've never played this game before, not multiplayer, not solo, I still decided to go with a medium, I would call it normal difficulty level. So he, this knight here is slightly stronger than the easy version. Apart from that, I believe there is no real changes to what they're doing. They will start the game with a title card face down. So I don't know what he's going to achieve, but it's typically, I don't know, between four to seven points or something like that. So he will score this or his guard basically at the end of the game, no matter what. This is the AI deck. I shuffle this and I also put in the two personality AI cards. I think there are two flavors, so there is a more warlike and, but he looks kind of peaceful to me. I mean, the knight with the rose. So I decided to put in the pious two extra cards. So that's now a deck of 11 cards and we will go through those throughout the game. I already did the setup for Prien of Tarth here. Um, you do that and I will not really go through the hoops of the standard setup here. You're typically getting three of those character cards. Um, the, with the one shield, they're all the same. Then there are there is some variety in the, some of the cards that have two shields and three shields. In the end, I decided to go with a character card with two shields. So the starting conditions are somewhat different and also the income that you get at the end of each given round. I mean, we only go through that twice. So I believe that's also not really ground or game breaking in any way. We are also starting the game with pretty standard equipment, a pretty standard horse level two which allows us to roll two black dice we have a standard armor which gives us two of those white dice here on um, the maximum we can roll is three anyway we have some coins and yes those coins come with the kickstarter version of the game look pretty nice actually we have two of those faith tokens those are pretty much re-rolls for st strength tokens which we need to roll those red dice later on. As part of setup I was allowed to draw three of those title cards and keep two. Not 100% sure if this was my best choice but the alternative was even worse. So if we will be able to complete those that's another 11 points at the end of the game. I was also allowed to draw four of those I think travel cards those are called. They are th come in three different flavors. You can discard every one of those and for each you get one of those strength tokens which is why I have four instead of three so I discarded the duplicate of this challenge card here. Here we have the public title card, so every player can claim those at the end of the game. And the AI player or the rivalry AI player will score them no matter what. So 13, 18 points right off the bat. And on top of this, we both start with 10 and 9 points here respectively. And that's partly because of the setup for the solo player. So the solo player always starts at 10 points. Whereas your starting victory points really depends on which character card you are going for. I think this was really a range between one and nine. And in the end, I decided to go with the nine pointer here. 
Down here we have the event for this round and in theory only one player can go there in order to claim this character. This character gives you one prestige tokens. They can be pretty nice pretty much for the tournaments. We already know what the event for the next round would be. Another extra space where we could go to in order to claim up to three of those travel cards. Also not bad actually. And last but not least as part of setup we have the tournament board. This is double sided. So there are two modes for the tournament. This is the more I would say friendly one. The other side is a version which could um, in theory lead to player versus player combat as I didn't fully grasp the way how the AI is placing their shield on through this other board, I decided to go with a more friendly version. And I think this is really a little bit more straightforward. And there are cards for the setup of these boards too. That's something that you do every round. And by the way, the game lasts exactly three rounds. And there's a perfect, perfect, perfect round tracker here which will guide you through accordingly. I think this is really something that's very nicely done. And this round token here, this resin one is also part of a Kickstarter exclusive as far as I understood. Not the coolest thing in the world, a nice steel one or not steel, but metal one would have been nice, but I will take it. The very standard one is a standard wooden disc. I'm the starting player and obviously I'm trying to get as many victory points as I can. Again there are three modes for the solo play. There is one mode where you basically have to go through three tournaments and have to be victorious in each three of those. Also sounds fun to me so this was the other one I was considering. The second one is more of a more fixed thing where it tells you I don't know with x amount of points you have won on each easy level on Y amount of points you win on medium level and so on. Um, this is something which I don't really like that much. And then last but not least, we have this mode here where the AI is really actually scoring some points. And I would say, despite the fact that you could have this PVP tournaments, I think it's really more or less multiplayer solo kind of games. Yes, there are worker placement spaces. There are cards you can take away from each other. And in the end, you are competing for victory points. But apart from that, there is really not a lot of player interaction in this game. So I think with this mode, using this AI mode, we are as close as we can to an actual two player game. Before we start our first worker and we have these nice little knights here on, on their horses, we have six workers. That's quite a lot actually, not necessarily a or exactly a vital game where you have one worker or so. No, here you have six. But again, before we are placing our first worker, we should somewhat understand what it is we are trying to achieve. Overall, we need seven of those relics, which really is quite a lot. So maybe we should start focusing on one of this and maybe going for this one here because yeah, it simply gives us one more glory point, not victory point, but glory point in this case. If we are somehow lucky and managing to get four more, then yeah, that's a bonus, but I don't think that we will be able to get that. On the other hand, we also need to strengthen our knight so we can start dueling these knights. So we already know who's waiting for us out there. So strength of 9, 10, uh, 10, 11, 9 and 10. So that's relatively low scoring there. Also 8 in the deck, maybe a 7 even. I don't know. But yeah, this is pretty much what we have to beat. We are rolling 4 dice in total. But for each color, we are only getting one. So even though we are rolling, let's say two white and two black, we will only ever resolve one of each. If we are adding some strength dice later on, we could then also gain additional strength dice. And yeah, the majority of those, I think the maximum here is a four. The maximum here is a three and the red die comes with a five. So getting to 9, 10, 11 is definitely not easy. There are other ways to bump our strength and adding some hit points and whatnot, but still it's not easy. When we look at the public goals, we see that this one here, I think this seems to be like a nice party. We need two of these musicians here and they're all explained in the rules, really nice rules in that respect at least. And there is one here. I mean, if we would go here and yeah, pretty much go for this, I think they're called, a, no, not assist, 
what are they called? Supporters, of course, supporters. So for one coin, we could give them, it would give us four points right off the bat, and then we would already have partly resolved or completed this card here. And in the meantime, I checked, it's the patron. Yes, that's us basically watching or listening to those dudes up there. So maybe that's a thing on the other hand there are amazing travel cards here too which would also give us two of those relics and i think that's what we should go to because when the rivalry or the ai goes here they are pretty much cleaning off a complete column when he goes to one of those so also something to consider so i think i talked myself into that we will go into this action that's basically a community space any amount of knights or workers can go there there are others which are somewhat more limited for example can you see that yeah this one here in a two-player game this one is blocked so one player can go there and yeah the i will go there and we basically get to choose two cards from anywhere we could also draw blindly from the top of the deck we are not replenishing by the way so we are definitely going for her because when we play her that she gives us immediately this relic goes into our hand there is no real hand size limit whatsoever and i think for the second card we will simply go for this one here which is another relic and we need relics like crazy and that's already our first action I mean, this part of the game is pretty standard. Worker plays some stuff, plays a worker, resolve it, and then next player turn is. Okay, we will reveal our first AI card. And we will start from top to bottom, or basically the AI will perform one of those. They will always start here. If they can't fully do that, they will go here. And if that, then, and then, then we would continue drawing. So I guess, because again, I have never played it, the AI will always be able to do something meaningful with that. In this case, yeah, he will send his first knight over here. Again, any amount of knights can go there. I could go there a second time, fully legal. And um, because he was choosing the challenge column he will go for all of those cards in that column so those cards are out of the game for good so there is no discard pile and reshuffle once those cards are gone there are gone but again that's standard stuff that the AI is doing and that was already the first turn of the AI player and again I mentioned this more than once I like simple and streamlined AI cards and from what I've seen on those cards and what I've read they seem to be pretty okay next is back to us and as there are or there is a public goal that asks for having a lot of money i think we should go in here to this space here this gives us three silver this is a three so we take it here according i have no clue why the golden one is much smaller than the silver one but from what i understand this is a three maybe it's the other way around then i messed this one up but for me gold is worth more than silver and that's again at the end of my turn things are really moving fast here but of course this game is not just about placing your workers we still have a travel phase later on we will have the tournament so yeah a lot of things can still happen okay let's see what he's doing okay here we have the perfect example he would go to the challenge space again because he cannot do that there and even if i would have taken one of the row or from that column then he would consider it as not completely um, doable so he would then move on and that's what he's doing now basically blocking that spot over here as i do have the money i think i want to secure this fella here right i mean there is definitely a lot of copies in that so i think right now it's not really tight but i really don't know how the ai is operating so i think we will go for a Porter. so we have to spend a coin because we are going for this one here also not being replenished what's gone is gone therefore we will immediately score one two three four and that's basically it but we will still use him maybe for the public goal up there and we will keep him nearby so we have become a patron isn't that lovely we are on the way of getting a patron next card for the ai oh yeah he will enlist in the tournament and i think he can do that because right now he has a strength of 12 and the strongest opponent is pretty much an 11 right now so he will totally go for this and we'll place his shield over here and in this m tournament mode that's the only way going to this uh, location and i think i forgot to place the work but anyone can go there 
Uh, that's the only way how you can place more shields onto the space um, than, than two. I think in the normal mode of the game you can place up to two shields during a later there is a somewhat assignment phase or so and when going to the herald that's the herald action then you are allowed to add additional shields onto the board here so he will score 10 points for this i mean right now i still have money and again we have still a lot more or two more rounds to go after this one and this choir here would allow me once per tilt or once per duel let's put it like this yeah once per duel actually to yeah set my horse die to the maximum which is four horses which is another strength and i guess that's not a bad thing the king here on the other hand would give me the appropriate prestige and right now i don't have any prestige tokens um and prestige is can be a nice tiebreaker but I like this one here better. Or maybe we go for the strength one here. Who is, how is he called? And I really like the artwork on those pieces, actually. Yeah, that's the fencing master, of course. I mean, this could be, I think, and he's for free, right? Yeah, let's go for that. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Again, I talk myself into that, so I will go here. I will grab the fencing master for free, giving me some choices later on or dealing with some of the randomness in this game. That's something I like. When you are dealing with dice, you should be given some means of yeah, dealing with the odds next action and okay this is taken by himself actually so he would go here but because i already have taken one card from that column he considers this as not fully completable so he will jump over here and then we will have to see yes we do have the king on the display so this king is simply removed from the game if there are some of those supporters which give you victory points in this case um, he would also get the victory point of course he's not paying anything he's not dealing with any resources whatsoever and i believe he's not getting any of those prestige markers because he has to prestige basically printed on that crest here so next it's either strength or more money but money is something i could go there anyway so i think i want to go for the maximum throughput here right he cannot take any more cards away from me so i think think yeah let's go there because that's again the maximum we can get here so that's three more strength and there is also a counter for three strength points here i will use those next card for this one he cannot go here and he cannot go here that's let's see so the king has already been taken here he would have taken this musician and i think this is the fencing master so we were kind of lucky that we have taken them both away so in this case he can't resolve either of those so we will keep going he cannot do this um, again the musician is gone i don't know i think yeah she is available yeah that's the squire not she that's the squire so unfortunately the squire is gone so this would have been my next bet but okay that's life i have to deal with it i still think i'm okay i am really not particularly strong there are still ways we have still the travel phase later on so don't get me wrong we might still get there uh but what are we going to do with our last action let's have a look at those travel cards that's these are romance cards and this could give us some more money i mean money is again it's not bad it's a victory point or a prestige but only one victory point yeah this is two victory points here we have to pay stuff pay three gold or pay free money and get both of those so also nice but i think we still need money right so we can go for two actually let's go to the travel action once more or to the travel space we will go for this one we need i want the money at some point in time that's that's for sure and then hmm what next simply two victory points or we could really go for the easy prestige i think we will go for the easy prestige let's go for it again we will not be able to play them all but at least up to three cards and i think i kept forgetting to place those dice right i think he should have placed two of his horses onto the space he should be down to only one like myself oh gosh i really have to start paying attention here okay what are we going here um this is this ah, okay he's going for the event space this has been taken by me so he will go to the event space which i have totally forgotten honestly but i 
think that's still okay. So his last worker will go in here, which means he's discarding this. Again, I'm not 100% sure if they should be able to get those prestige points I or prestige tokens. I don't think so. But that's pretty much the end of the first action phase. Then we are moving to the first travel phase of the game. And this little three tells us we are now allowed to play up to three cards. You can do that going around the table one, one card at a time. You can, I believe, also play that um, simultaneously, whatever floats your boat. Here it doesn't matter because the eye doesn't play any of those travel cards. So it's pretty much up to me deciding on which card to play. I think I want to go for this Romance card here for sure. Again, I could decide to go for a victory point, but again, for tiebreaker purposes, I really want that prestige token. That's the red one. You can have multiple prestige tokens, but only one of each type. So that's my red prestige token. No more can be taken. This card is out of the game for good and we still have two more cards to go. We have enough re-worlds and hmm, we could go for another challenge which would give us this but right now I think I'm still okay. Let's go for this one here. This simply gives us this uh, what is it a ring yeah it is simply a ring that's our first relic we got through the game we can use them once basically per round i would say and this allows me to reroll up to four dice that's amazing we will totally get this and that's a nice romance and again i love the artwork very thematic and really looking cool we still have one more to go and in theory i could go for the paternoster here and the paternoster allows us to set my armory die to the maximum value if I would go for this, I have to spend a coin and I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm also cashing in this market card and this gives us the appropriate, where is it, Pater Noster token here. Pretty cool stuff. I think that wasn't a terrible travel phase so far. I was able to get two of those relics and again, we keep, we need four for this card or three for that card. So that's, I think, already a pretty good position to be in. Then we do the refresh, which means all of what's left is being removed from the board. So those market cards are gone. This Romance card is gone. Those supporters are gone. And then we are basically replenishing the board and we are also removing all of the workers back to their play. I will do that now off camera. So a standard one or a special supporter goes in here and then we start filling up basically using the ones then we are using the twos and i'm not sure if we should take them from the bottom or not i really don't care at this point in time i'm really not paying too much attention here so these are the new supporters that came out and of course these black discs they're not part of the game they recommend you using um, whatever coins or whatnot but i'm using some of these standard black discs to block off those spaces we do pretty much the same for those travel cards So that's the new selection. We also get our income. So that's another coin. Five more strength points. Okay, I basically completely forgot about this. And one faith token here. Again, we get that one more time at the end of this round. And I think last but not least, we are removing the event card, replacing it with the event card we already know. So when we go there, we would get three travel cards. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, now we are also revealing the event card for the next and last one. That's another action one. Wow, if we would go there for two strength, we could get a level four horse or a level four armor. But you cannot jump levels. So in order to claim this, that's why you basically get this sneak peek. You want to prepare and get your horse or your armor to level three. And keep in mind, there is a public goal that is asking for a level four horse and a level four armor worth six glory points. That was the refresh phase. We are moving into the herald phase. So now we are placing our knights or our crests onto the tournament board. And because we are first, we get to choose first here. Hmm. This one is a pretty tough one. Um, he 
pretty much only quote unquote comes with a strength of nine but he's also taking away two red dice from you but he's worth seven glory points and that's something but because i have the fencing master i think i could live with that actually i could easily i think that's okay no we will send our first shield in here battling this knight and i believe there is even a description of these crests i believe there is i believe there is so we are now fighting the only knight that's not listed here in the roll of arms so this must be heath ledger right i mean he was an imposter too yeah i mean we have those snakes but again those snakes are not part of that so i'm not sure if i'm missing something here i'm pretty sure this is not any extra stuff exclusive i found i think basically all of the others but not this one here yeah this must be Heath Ledger. so it could be maybe francesco sforza here the italian condottieri that became the duke of milan i don't know but next it's our friend he will go to the highest scoring one that's still available four points six points six points I think in this case, does it matter? I think he can I he can only do that once per city, of course. So we will have to go in here. So when, if we now go down here, we would take the opportunity away from him. So being first definitely does help. You can only basically battle or run a duel in one city. This works completely different in the other mode where you are only placing one shield. And again, you have to weigh, work your way up pretty much towards the finals also very nice but again i was simply too stupid to understand so yeah i think we will try to battle down here you're not really losing anything as far as i can remember so i guess we should be okay after the herald phase we are moving down to the actual tournament now things get juicy we will start in florencia from left to right we can immediately deal with that i mean that's really easy so he will definitely defeat this fella here coming with a 12 we're just comparing those um, values here and he will immediately score those six points so he's moving to 16 he started at 10 and then it's us and we have to basically battle this guy twice or we have to win him twice we are battling up to three times so whoever wins two tilts out of three will be considered the winner and now i'm not so sure if i will be able to make it or not but we will see about that so we will definitely yeah we will grab it and we'll simply place him onto our player board so again what what this means is uh, we have to fight strength of nine twice at least and he's basically taking two red dice away from you so in order to roll a red die at all we have to invest some strength points here but this is now very sequential what we have to do the first thing is that we have to now consider how many strength points we are spending to trade those in for red dice again we need at least three so in this case i guess we will simply spend three tokens for now and again this gives us three of those red dice in theory i could immediately spend a fourth one and the fourth one simply unlocks this special ability here this is this star-like symbol which is on one side and when you roll this and you have the special ability so basically for strength tokens you are allowed to yeah, set it to the maximum side definitely very very powerful so we have taken care of that then we are basically rolling our dice pool so in theory maybe not so fast the first thing that always happens is um, we could now use a support character or any other ability that comes with this 10 symbol we don't have that so we can simply jump over this and then we are really rolling those dice because we are fighting the nameless one we have to remove two red dice for that so that's pretty much what we are rolling right now and again we can use one of each color and that's kind of a waste um, on the other hand it's also good so we don't need to use our fencing master because this is something that you can only use once so i think overall that was kind of okay actually so we have this we have oops that and we have a one so in total 
that's a tie. Nine versus nine. This is now something which you can consider, but we see this knight has a prestige of two. And I'm not sure how Heath Ledger did this, but we only have a prestige of one. So we would lose that. Definitely a bummer. So we have to do something. Next, we could now spend exactly one faith token to reroll up to two dice. And I mean, why not, right? I mean, we still have two more dice left here. So yeah, let's do that. So we are spending one faith token. This tells us we have used that. And again, we will roll these to die. If any one of those, uh, if this base, uh, no. Hmm. In theory, we should maybe roll this die, but this also has some blanks. And right now we are tight. No, let's roll these two dice for now. Ah, no, and it's also a one. Okay, but we have basically used our chance. So we cannot use another faith token for this tilt. Next, we could now use um, character one character with a lance ability. This would be the fencing master. The problem is, or the good thing is, we already have the five here. So we don't need to use that. Then we could do that again. Another character, because this one would have been gone by then. But again, we didn't use him. And this, this Bart here doesn't really do us anything for the combat. Next, we could then use one of our, uh, sorry, one of our relics. And this relic here allows us to place this on the other side. And I think in order to win this first tilt, that's what we are going to do. So we are flipping this to this side. And then we are checking who has won that tilt. And that's clearly us. That's 11 versus the nine here. Perfect. We have won our very first tilt. Amazing. The problem is we need to any attack modifiers would have been removed. We are allowed to keep the strength points we have spent. And I think I should have really placed this here onto our player board because if we lose, we could still take something back, which is definitely helpful. But this is already activated and we will continue rolling some dice. So we are not doing this here again. We could now again start using or adding more strength to maybe increase that to uh, a four. But again, because we still have our fencing master, one red die is everything we need. So we are simply rolling those dice again. And whatever happens, we know that we have rolled at least a five on this one. And then if we would lose this tail, we could still decide adding another strength point, for example. But let's see about that. Okay, I think I'm okay with that result. So these are the three dice I'm using. Even that, that's already a 10. We don't even have to use the fencing master here. I think this was extremely lucky. So we don't need any rerolls. We don't need the fencing master just for the laughs. We could in theory do that, but I think we may want to use um, the fencing master later on. So I think overall this worked perfectly actually. No fencing master. We don't need the relic again because we are already at a 10 and that's only a nine here, which means we have basically gained our second victory. So that's the second of those gold points. Perfect. We were able to defeat this nameless knight here, giving us seven victory points in total. So we are jumping up to 20. I take that. That was pretty cool. And so far, I really like this mechanic a lot, actually. I really, really do. Then we are removing all of those tokens. Unfortunately, we get, don't get to unflip those. That was the main reason why I didn't use the fencing master because we still have another duel of, in front of us. So this one is out of here. And actually, I don't know. Do we reshuffle those or not? I don't know. I think for now we still have enough. I think everything else, this red die goes because we have to spend those again. Yeah, I really do like this mechanic. Awesome. Then we are moving over to Paris only. Our friend is here and that's the big one. So he has a 12, definitely beating the 11 here, which means he's jumping to 26 points in total. And then last but not least, we are moving to Munich, München. And we have to beat another nine. This one is a bit easier to deal with because um, yeah, he doesn't steal us any red or white dice whatsoever. So let's grab this folk. Do we know who this is? Yes, we do. That's James II, King of Scots, known as Fiery Face. Wow, nice. So let's follow him through again. We don't have any tent ability, so we can jump over again. I can spend now strength points to buy myself some red dice. 
And do I want to go for four right away or should I really start slow and just see you? I think I will spend two strength points for now to buy myself two red dice. Keep in mind, we still have the fencing master with me. And if I need the fencing master, I can still buy two more uh, red dice later on, potentially, but it's still not a guarantee. Um, then, yeah, again, that's basically it. We are rolling those dice, but we still have some rerolls. Yeah, I think so. Okay, what do we have? I think that's not bad. So we have the four, we have the four, and we have the three. Perfect. That's 11. That's amazing. I need those dice for my Arkham Horror playthroughs whatsoever. So again, I don't need to spend any rerolls or any crosses here or faith tokens. I don't need my fencing master, fencing master or a relic because again, that's 11 strength points in total versus the nine. So yet again, we were very successful here. And again, we go into the next round. We still have our, basically our dice here. I don't need to buy any more because again, we have the fencing master. So we can turn it to a five and one die per color. So yeah, let's definitely roll those guys. Maybe if we can, if we lose, we can still then buy more for the last tilt of the duel. Yeah, let's simply roll those. And that was, I think, still okay. So that's a three, that's a four, that's a three, that's seven, that's 10 points. That's all we need. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. We didn't need to use the fencing master one single time. Yeah, that's insane. Insanely good. No reroll, no fencing master. Again, just for the laughs, this time we will use him. Again, there is no added bonus whatsoever, but it will unflip basically at the refresh phase of the next round. We don't need to use our relic here, which means we are looking at it. We have gained our or we won our second tilt. Amazing, which means we will score an additional four points. OK, we are awfully close. I take that. But that's pretty much the end of the dual phase. Again, everything else will reset at the refresh phase of the next round. And we don't need them. These are really tournament abilities. Nothing else. This fella is out of here. This was James II. These red dice are gone, but we are getting those back. Those are go back. We will remove those strength tokens. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of the very first round. So up next, we would, would move into the next action phase. But I guess for today, I will call it just to leave you some room to send in your observations make me aware if i goofed things up make me aware of strategic mistakes let me know what you think i should be doing i really need all the help i can get i still think we have to reseed the tournament board i think this is something i will basically do off camera yeah that's really not fun to watch maybe let's have a quick look at the next tournament card so we are now in round two so we will see are these slightly stronger i think the wooden ones are definitely the stronger ones right no they are not there are sevens, eights, and, but they also don't provide us as many victory points, actually. Who are the strongest ones? I think those are these flowery ones. Yeah, these ones here. Yeah, we have one here, actually. We have one here. So one very strong opponent is about to appear in Florencia next round. So yeah, really looking forward to that one. But again, I will then seed the tournament board accordingly. And yeah, that's pretty much round one of Glory, a game of knights. I really hope you enjoyed it so far. Huge shout out to all of my patrons out there and my channel members. Really appreciate your support a lot. If you want to support my channel, you will find a link to my page on Patreon or you can directly join me here on YouTube. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. This typically helps. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.